welcome to part two of the most amazing project that we have undertaken. The, for, for those of you who don't know, we are coming up with our second craft kit called Super Not Another Craft Kit. Also short for snack, because it's a snack. And in this kit, we are doing something that nobody has ever done before, which is not creating a character mold, but we are also creating a creature mold. Yes, a four-legged, 3D character that you can cast over and over again. And I dropped it. Basically, this is your canvas. Yes, this is the character that I hand sculpted, kit bashing, kit bashed. If you're interested in seeing the process of making this character d d design, make sure that you watch part one of this vlog. And the kit is going to be released in a couple of days, actually. So if you want to know, when it's going to be released the exact time because we do have limited quantities. I will link down below the Smart Art website so you can make sure you put your name in there so that you can get the email immediately as soon as it is released. But similarly to the previous kit, I recorded myself testing different products to say yay or nay so that you can see my selection process and why I chose other things over others. I kid you not, we've tested hundreds of products. so. I'm not going to show you all 100 because many of them were just no, because they're just not good enough for us. And if I'm not mistaken, in today's vlog, because they were recorded ahead of time, we're going to be looking at airbrushes. So I have no idea what's in this vlog or what I said, so we're, we're just like watching it for the first time because my editors take care of the editing and then I rewatch and I'm like, huh, I did say no to this for that. All right, so off we go. We have our headphones on and it looks like we are starting with Ramses, the cute little baby. And you can see everything from a from brush sets to tool sets to even resin and then different kinds of mats, thicknesses, colors. <laughs> All right, let's get going with the doing. Hey Grains, we are back with more samples to test and to find out if they are worth putting in the kit or not, but Ramses is helping me and he's supervising as per usual. But more specifically today, I really want to try some airbrushes and we're going to try paints to make sure that they're compatible. Ramses, pumpkin, I need to get some work done, huh? <laughs> so in our previous kit, we worked with Jacquard because they make gorgeous colors, beautiful pigments, and everything a grain of crafty person can dream of. So I was sent some airbrush paints in regular opaque colors, but also in metallics. So as you can see, this is gold, but the pigment settled, which means we gon' shake it. We gon' shake it. Oh, you can hear a little ball in there. Very, ooh, yes. Oh my God, you're so pretty. Oh yes, I love you. Okay, let's get to swatching and see what colors look like what. I feel like they're gonna be similar in terms of pigment to the previous ones, the acrylic paints. And so here are all the beautiful colors. For sure, we're going to be adding these ones over here. We need our primary colors, that's for sure. And now the question is, wait, do we have brown? You know what? I have a feeling they sent me all the colors that I liked. <laughs> oh no, they know me. Oh no, I have a pattern. <laughs> So the reason I'm not putting them directly into the airbrush just yet is because I want to make sure that the black and white, in addition to, wait, is that white? That is a varnish. <gasps> okay, I'm keeping you aside. That the black and white are also good for brushing on. Because when you make your character, you're definitely going to be needing to add in some detail. Maybe the eyes. But I mean, that goes for any color, so all of them are gonna be tested. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the opaque blue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit like a saw. Oh, I did not mix that enough. I think it was in the nozzle. Okay, nozzle's emptied. Ooh, yeah, that needs more mixing. Yeah, one of the things you need to know about airbrush because we are doing airbrushing. This kit will get its own airbrush and airbrush paint. So one of the things you absolutely must do, shake the sugar snaps out of it. So every time you need to use it, you gotta shake it. See, once is not enough. Every time you need to reuse it or put some more out, you have to shake it. It's no no compromise here, you gotta shake it. You could see the separation here. So good lesson, shake your colors a lot before using them. That's every time you need to use them, not just once at the beginning. But I think that's not gonna stop us from being able to see. Oh, that is pretty. 
Remember, this is not made for paper, but that is a really pretty color. And usually when it comes to airbrushing, it takes at least one coat. So this is a good thing. This is beautiful. I was really worried about the pigment, but holy shrimp. That is vibrant. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I am in love. Off we go with yellow and red. Oh shoot. Oh boy, that can happen. Oh, it was blocked. There was like a chunk right there. Oh, that's good. Definitely be careful when you're doing this because if something like this gets stuck in your airbrush, that can cause a clog. So mix way more than I did. Yeah, that's that's what I keep saying. Definitely keep mixing because you never know when it's going to actually need, you know, a redo of some sort. Our yellow. Yes. I'm just gonna go ahead with this. Oh, that is thick. That is thick. I'm a little worried about this and how much PSI it's going to need to go through the machine, but we'll get to that when we get to that. All right, I'm gonna swatch everything and I'll get back to you, Grades. All right, it's pretty clear that these colors are absolutely beautiful. One of the things I realized is we're probably going to need to add mini cups or something so that the colors can be mixed because you can't necessarily put them and mix them in the chamber for the airbrush right away. All right, now that we have the regular colors, let's check out these beautiful metallic coppers. Oh my God. I know that in the previous kit, many of you were like, I wish you had added a silver. I think this might be the appropriate time to add a silver, so. So I am saying it's appropriate time to add a silver. However, however, we did encounter a small issue with the silver and the compatibility with the airbrush that we chose. So just to make sure that your hopes aren't up, we actually had to cut silver. We only put one metallic color in there and it's gold because it was the best one that actually worked with the airbrush. Every other one was fine, but then the silver just kept blocking it. So we had to, we had to unfortunately do a cut. I still really want the gold to be there because it adds that extra magical shine and silver might be in. Now, not sure, oh, this is a lighter gold and this is more of an intense, I kind of like intense gold. We're gonna try this one, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna swatch these. I'm also tempted to do copper. Oh my God, I don't know how many colors I'm gonna be allowed to put in the box. I'm gonna cram in as much as I can. <laughs> now, technically these shouldn't be opaque because they kind of go as an overcoat to the other colors. There you go, very translucent which is what we want. We don't want it to be opaque because usually it goes on top of other colors like yellow or orange or brown. Okay, here's the other one. This one's too, what's the word? Too tame, too desaturated for me. I really like this gold better. And then over here we have our silver. Mm, does it actually shine? Mm, not so much. I mean, it's okay. The gold is definitely shiny. Let's wait for it to dry. Maybe that's what it needs. And I'll be honest, I really completely forgot how unshiny and unsilvery mm, metallic this color was also. So it, it's, it's starting to remind me why we removed it entirely from the kit as an option. And here's our beautiful <laughs> copper. Oh yes. Oh, I love you so much. Here are the other colors. This blue is really pretty. And you can see that it's more transparent than the opaque one. I'm gonna go in with the red. Also more transparent, very nice. But it's kind of in between. It's not as transparent as these ones up here. So it's kind of an in-between. So you can technically use this on its own, just multiple coats. And our yellow. And I have to say, compared to the other colors, the silver's not as metallic as I thought it would be. We might have to do some tweaking to make it a little bit more shiny. Cause I mean, look at the copper, beautiful. I mean, it is there, but I think slight tweaking might make it even better. But this gold, I am in love. <laughs> Just a little tweaking here. This I like, oh my God, I kind of want copper. These ones are definitely shiny. We also have metallic white, but I don't think we're gonna need it. I'm gonna put it right on the black so that we can see it better. Oh gosh, yeah, that one had a thing in there too. All right, let's see what this one looks. Aha, uh -huh, very, very transparent. So it should be kind of like a shiny overlay. I don't think I'm gonna add it. Oh gosh, that looks, that looks wrong. That looks so wrong. Let me get rid of this. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be adding a shiny white. I don't think we need it, especially if we're gonna use any of these other colors. I'm gonna say this again, but these are absolutely beautiful. I don't know, I, I want all of them. Oh my God, I want all of these shiny ones, but no, I have to choose. 
I have to choose wisely. Still, the metal, the metallic, the silver gray, not as shiny. Maybe it's just me. All right, now it's time for the airbrushes. One of the things I'm going to be looking at is easy to use, cleanability, and a little bit of everything, generally speaking. So this one is an 18 PSI, and the cap is twist off, which is not necessarily my favorite, but definitely secure. All right, we're gonna put some blue in here, just a couple of drops, and see how well it works. So is it compatible with the jacquard is the biggest question. All right, so let's press the button. Oh, okay. So the compressor starts right away, and pressing the button, not bad. Not that much difference in control. Oh, okay, I have to turn it off. There's not that much slide in the control. Oh, okay, we can't, we can't control it too much. Then again, I also want something that's beginner friendly. I don't want something that's too complicated. I want, I want everybody to be included in this. Now, here's the thing. The other thing I want you to take a look at is the splashability is what I'm gonna call it. So this specific airbrush was okay, but as you can see from where I started in the center, the splashability of the actual pigment went way higher than the actual paper, which is not good because we want as much, I know it's airbrush, but we need as much focus as possible. So the more I'm using it, the more I realize it's actually pretty splotchy. So the colors are not coming down even. It's almost like a blow pen. I do not like this, but also I realized that there's no cap to cover the front part. So when you're taking breaks, it doesn't get dry. Mm, that's something I'm gonna have to keep looking for. You know what? Now I'm curious to see if this same airbrush can handle the Liquitex paint versus the Jacquard. All right, so here we go with the Liquitex, which is much thinner paint and how, oh, okay. Oh my, this is comp. It was so terrible. Like the unevenness of the colors, and trust me, I love my Liquitexes for airbrushing as you've seen in previous videos, but I really wanted to see if it was paint compatibility or if it really was the airbrush. And in this case, it's 100% the airbrush. The colors were just coming out like, like spitting, but at the same time, a, like a waterfall. It was just so inconsistent and gross. Er, my good. This one already, I can see that it has a cap at the front to protect your needle from drying out. Oh my god, is this a twisty also? Yeah, okay, this is a twisty. Cool. All right, so we have the charging. Definitely don't get that wet. Okay, same thing. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's turn it on and let's see how well it handles the thick paint. Well, hello. Uh, no. Okay, there we go. Oh, this is too thick. Too thick. Yeah, I think the paint is too thick for this. Which basically means that the PSI or the pressure that's coming out of that actual airbrush is just way too low for the paints that we want. So we want to keep an eye on the quality of the paint. We still want it to be opaque and vibrant and pretty, but we want an airbrush that matches with it. This one can't handle good quality paint, so nay on that one. All right, there are a few others that are 15 PSI, which is definitely a no-go for me automatically. So I'm not even gonna test those ones, but now we have an 18 to 25 adjustable. So this one is the strongest of the bunch that are portable, chargeable, and uh, no need for compressors. So let's try this one with the Jacquard's fingers crossed. Oh, and it does come with a cap, so that's, that's always needed. <laughs> and the other thing about this is that it's pretty light. I think the outside is a plastic casing. So that's something we have to keep in mind. You can already tell just by me holding that airbrush, I felt more confident with it, despite the fact that I am not necessarily a professional with airbrush using. I already had a good feeling about this one immediately. So let's see if that's the one we actually liked. Let's first test it. I feel like the Jacquard paints are still pretty thick. All right, let's see. Okay, let's go. Oh. Oh, baby. Oh my God. Heck yeah. Look at the evenness of the color coming out of that airbrush. Yes, of course it's airbrush. You're gonna get a little splotchy here and there, of course, depending on your distance as well. But this airbrush is absolutely phenomenal compared to the other ones. I even cut out ones that I did test. I was like, nope, next, nope, next. So I was like, this one I had a good feeling about and just look at the beauty. Look at it, let's zoom in. The beauty of the evenness of these colors. So this is looking, I know it looks fuzzy, but that's, it's not fuzzy. This is looking pretty decent. I'm gonna charge it a little bit more and see if that helps with the pressure, but this is the best and only proper performing one so far. And the spillage is not bad at all. I mean, it is an airbrush, so it is to be expected, and this 
can be done with different kinds of adjustments. But I am really happy. Oh my God, the last one we tried is the one that's the salvation. <laughs> Giving it a good charge made it even more smooth. All the other ones, I charged them about halfway when I did the full weight on all of them. They were also disappointing except for that one. And so what I wanted to do is test out the airbrush with the colors, see what kind of base gradients that we can do. And as always, I like to start sometimes with a white base. You don't necessarily have to. I just find that it gives it basically a good thing to hold on to. And then I wanted to test the yellow so that I can have a better understanding of how it's going to interact with the clay, which is gray. And then we have the plaster, which is white. So giving a white coat is actually not a bad idea at all. And of course, because I love airbrushing, I couldn't help myself, but I went ahead and added blue. That's the blue that's going to also be in the kit. And I was like, oh, just the gray. And you can go back and forth to make sure that you do get enough gradients. You do have to remember also that you must clean the airbrush between each color, otherwise you get some contamination. And then of course, because I wanted accent color, I went in with the gold and it's beautiful. It really makes everything absolutely pop right out. So I'm really happy with the choices that we made for this. And so as you can see, this is the test subject. I keep using this test subject for a lot of things, including glitter and color changing stuff, which we ended up not going with because it just wasn't compatible with everything that we had. But look how cute it is. Oh my God, the airbrushing is going to be so fun. And I want you to know that the airbrush is also for beginners. So I didn't take something that was going to be hard in, or in terms of how to learn how to use it, but I'll also be giving, of course, videos as the same thing. I can't even talk. Similarly to the previous kit, you will be getting exclusive videos of how to use every material in here so that you can feel more confident. And we have one more vlog to go, so get ready for that. I hope you're as excited as I am again. Link down below for the sign up as a reminder of when the kit launches, which is really soon.